I've been yammering away at the various consequences associated with an overheated earth for a long time. Stunningly, in all that time, I've yet to mention human health. I've described loss of habitat for human animals, although I've yet to talk about other consequences, such as diseases and ailments that result from a warming planet. For nearly 20 years in college classrooms, I described how a warmer earth increases metabolic activity in various invertebrates. Classic examples are tick-borne diseases, such as Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. These diseases have increased greatly as the earth has warmed. However, I've yet to describe the many other negative consequences in this space. A short overview of the current situation is in order. As I have pointed out repeatedly in this space, even the designed-to-fail Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has concluded Earth is amid the most rapid change in planetary history. The IPCC also concluded climate change is irreversible. These two reports, issued less than a year apart, have correctly concluded that Earth is amid abrupt, irreversible climate change. Both reports were published more than five years ago, yet this critically important information is rarely mentioned by media personalities, government officials, or paid climate scientists. It's worse than that, of course. According to an annual report released by the World Meteorological Organization on October 28, 2024, greenhouse gas concentrations surge again to new record in 2023. That, in fact, is the title of a press release. Here's the lead. Quote, Greenhouse gas levels surged to a new record in 2023, committing the planet to rising temperatures for many years to come, according to a report from the World Meteorological Organization. End quote. The next sentence completes the first paragraph. Quote, Carbon dioxide is accumulating in the atmosphere faster than any time experienced during human existence, rising by more than 10% in just two decades. End quote. The press release continues with five key messages. One, quote, CO2 concentrations have increased 11.4% in just 20 years. End quote. Two, quote, Long lifetime of CO2 in atmosphere locks in future temperature increase, end quote. Three, quote, El Nino and vegetation fires fuel surge in later part of 2023, end quote. Four, quote, effectiveness of carbon sinks like forests cannot be taken for granted, end quote. And five, quote, improved understanding of carbon climate feedbacks is needed, end quote. Compared to pre-industrial numbers, global atmospheric CO2 was 151% higher. Relative to the pre-1750 standard, atmospheric methane was 265% higher, and nitrous oxide was 125% higher. Global average atmospheric concentrations were 420 parts per million for atmospheric carbon dioxide, 1,934 parts per million billion for methane, and 336.9 parts per billion nitrous oxide. These numbers are extremely high and far exceed the figures stated by the Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases as warranting extreme concern. With respect to these statistics in the press release, World Meteorological Organization Secretary General Celeste Salo said, quote, Another year, another record. This should set alarm bells ringing among decision makers. We are clearly off track to meet the Paris Agreement goal of limiting warming to well below 2 degrees C and aiming for 1.5 degrees C above pre-industrial levels. These are more than just statistics. Every part per million and every fraction of a degree temperature increase has a real impact on our lives and our planet, end quote. We are, quote, clearly off track to meet the Paris Agreement goal of limiting warming to well below 2 degrees C and aiming for 1.5 degrees C above pre-industrial levels, end quote. After all, governments of the world concluded we had surpassed the 2 degrees C Rubicon more than a year ago. World Meteorological Organization Deputy Secretary General Co. Barrett is quoted in the press release. Quote, the World Meteorological Organization's annual greenhouse gas bulletin warn, warns that we face a potential vicious cycle. Natural climate variability plays a big role in carbon cycle. But in the near future, climate change itself could cause ecosystems to become larger sources of greenhouse gases. Wildfires could release more carbon emissions into the atmosphere, whilst the warmer ocean might absorb less CO2. Consequently, more CO2 could stay in the atmosphere to accelerate global warming. 
these climate feedbacks are critical concerns to human society. End quote. There's no doubt, quote, these climate feedbacks are critical concerns to human society, end quote. After all, they represent self-reinforcing feedback loops, only one of which is necessary to ensure the irreversibility of climate change. The World Meteorological Organization Deputy Secretary General apparently is unaware that the IPCC admitted that we have already triggered a self-reinforcing feedback loop in its September 24, 2019 IPCC Special Report on the ocean, and cryosphere in a changing climate. According to the press release, quote, the last time the Earth experienced a comparable concentration of CO2 was 3 to 5 million years ago, when the temperature was 2, degree, 2 to 3 degrees C warmer and sea level was 10 to 20 meters higher than now, end quote. However, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere were accumulating far more slowly 3 to 5 million years ago than they are today. In addition to increased metabolic activity exhibited by ticks and other invertebrates, there are many other adverse consequences of a warming planet for human health. On October 28, 2024, an article in The Guardian reported via The Lead that, quote, miscarriages, premature babies, and harm to mothers caused by the climate crisis are a blind spot in action plans, according to a report aimed at the decision makers who will attend the COP29 summit, summit in November, end quote. The article in The Guardian goes on to quote the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, quote, We're playing with fire, but there can be no more playing for time. We're out of time. End quote. Guterres has made similar statements for at least a decade. He is joined by the predecessor to the IPCC, the Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases, in indicating we ran out of time many years ago. It's not only reduced habitat, the direct effects of an overheated planet, miscarriages, premature babies, and harm to mothers at issue here. According to NPR via headline, dengue fever is rare in L.A. That could start to change because of climate change. This article was published October 22, 2024. It indicates that dengue fever is common in many places around the world, but it's new to Southern California. It's new to Southern California and other places because the world is warming. As a result of the warming planet leading to increased metabolic activity, species that carry diseases are inhabiting new locations. In places such as Southern California, non-indigenous species are taking advantage of new habitat and are proliferating. This proliferation is not always appreciated by humans.